Hey, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are doing our March Madness, and it's everything practice questions all month long. If you have any questions that you may want me to cover, let me know so that I can add those into the rotation as I'm building this out for the month. As y'all know, I like to always give my disclaimer. For those of you who are familiar with me, been to the channel, watched any of my videos, taken any of my courses, come to any of my reviews, or have any of my resources, hey y'all. And for those of you who are new here, welcome, 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 welcome to the channel. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I design these resources and videos to assist nurses and nurse practitioners with being successful on boards as well as in practice. As we know, there's no absolutes in medicine and everything is handled on a patient by patient basis. So when I give you these scenarios, there are guidelines that are currently being tested on boards and I'm getting you prepared for that. When we do practice questions, that's what it's designed towards as well. So follow along and take that as, um, as it comes, okay? So just apply that. And let's get into the questions. All right. So the first question states, an African-American male patient presents to the office for follow-up today. He has a history of hypertension, COPD, and seasonal allergies. He currently takes hydrochlorothiazide daily. On exam today, his blood pressure is 146 over 92. What would be the next best medication to add to his regimen? Is it A, lisinopril? B, amlodipine, C, valsartan, or D, chlorothaladone. Take a moment and tell me what you think in the comments, and then we'll go over it. All right, y'all know I always recommend reading the stem of the question first, stem being that actual question, you know, the last, typically the last um, sentence in the question, but what is truly being asked. And I say this because it slows us down to focus in on what is um, actually being asked and not us formulating our own thought process. Because you know, some of these scenarios that are provided to us on exams are lengthy and they have all these details and we start to process these things and we start to work through it. And that's great, that's what you should do. But along those times, sometimes we start to answer something that's not even gonna be the question, right? And then we missed and picked the wrong thing or we miss a key word because in our mind, we have already thought, hey, they're gonna ask me, what's this treatment or what's that? And that's not what they're asking, right? So let's read the stem of the question first. It states, what would be the next best medication to add to his regimen? So let's take it back and see what's going on. So he's an African-American male, comes in just for follow-up today, has a history of hypertension. He has a history of COPD, seasonal allergies, all right. Um, he's currently taking HCTZ. His blood pressure is still elevated. It's 146 over 92. So what are we going to do? What are what are we adding here? Because he definitely does need something added if he is on HCTZ and is uncontrolled. And yes, we know typically in practice, we want to get them to do blood pressure laws. We will follow and see it um, if it's sustaining in this range. Um, but here, uh, based off what's provided to us, it's elevated and we need to add something, right? Would you add lisinopril? Mm, I mean, there's nothing wrong with last set of real, but is that your best option? Let's hold it and keep on going. B, amlodipine, would you add that? Yep, that's my thought process. I would go with that first, right? Valsartan, would you add this? Or D, chlorothaladone. I would, you know, you can go ahead and eliminate chlorothaladone. He's already on HCTZ. I wouldn't necessarily just go and add another thiazide, right? So we'll take that out. Um... The lisinopril, the valsartan, if he had a history of diabetes, chronic kidney disease, I would have been, you know, steering more with that. Um, but the best answer, the best answer choice here is B, amlodipine. It is a calcium channel blocker. This patient is an African-American male already on thiazides. Thiazides are our first line therapy uh, across the board based off of our ACC and AHA guidelines, the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association guidelines that we are following on boards. So thiazides is that first line therapy, right? Um, <clears throat> and again, we know we do it on patient by patient basis, but also it is known, it is stated, is in the process, it's in the guidelines with African-American patients, thiazides being the first line, but they typically respond best to combination medicines and having dual treatments like thiazides and calcium channel blockers together. Okay, so B on multiple levels would be the best option in this scenario. 
All right, let's go to our next question. Next question, Ms. Smith presents to the office today with complaints of urgency and urinary frequency. The nurse practitioner diagnoses an uncomplicated UTI. The patient denies any allergies. What is the first line therapy for the treatment? Is it A, macrobid, B, ciprofloxacin, C, Bactrim, or D, Augmentin? Take a moment and tell me what you think in the comments. All right, reading the stem of the question first, the patient denies any allergy. So what is the, the first line therapy? All right, so this patient has been diagnosed with uncomplicated UTIs. Um, first line therapy for uncomplicated UTI is what? It's a macrobid, also known as nitrofurantoin. Now, with UTIs, let me tell you a little bit, um, and I do have videos on this, but UTIs, one, with it being uncomplicated, if the test is telling you that, that's going to help you decide the duration of how long you utilize this medicine because macrobid is the first line therapy um, for adults uh, for UTIs, right? And um, if it's uncomplicated, you can put them on this medication for three days. If it's complicated, you want to advance that seven to 10 days uh, for therapy, okay? Now, you know, if they're sulfur allergies, you don't want to uh, give them the Bactrim. If they're pregnant, you don't want to give them the Bactrim. Um, also, for the kiddos, remembering that first-line therapy for UTIs for the children is actually Bactrim. Now, alternate medications in case if they have like a sulfur allergy or something of that nature and you can't utilize the Bactrim, next is your Augmentin and then they get into the cephalosporins, okay? So just some little tidbits on UTIs. All right, and let's hit question number three for today. A patient presents to the office today with complaints of a migraine headache. Patient states that he has been taking propranolol, but today is experiencing a severe migraine. What is the best action by the nurse practitioner? Would you give them A, Elevil, B, Depakote, C, Sumatriptan, or D, Prednisone? Take a moment and tell me what you think in the comments. All right, so the step of the question states, what is the best action by the nurse practitioner? All right, so this patient is complaining of a migraine headache, states he's already taking propranolol, but today he's experiencing a severe migraine anyway. So what will we do next? Will we give them Elevil? No. Um, Depakote? No, I wouldn't. And, and let's think why. Uh, Depakote, Elevil, propranolol, which he is already on, are used as prophylactic therapy for migraine headaches, right? And this is an acute migraine headache. Uh, we need abortive therapy, right? Because we're already on the prophylactic therapy. We don't need to give additional prophylactic therapy regimens like Elevil and Depakote. So here you want to give C, Sumatriptan. You know, the triptans are utilized as abortive therapy. I always tell y'all to have migraine videos on here. But I always tell y'all, if one, pay attention to those key terms. If the test says you know, abortive therapy for the migraines, you're going to go with your triptan. If they say prophylactic therapy, you're going to think about your beta blockers, like your propranolols, those LOLs, the Elevils, the Depakotes. You know, you, you need to be able to um, determine in each one of those separate therapies. Don't miss those key terms. Uh, two, if they speak of a cardiac history, if they have hypertension, if they have cardiac disease, then you don't want to give them uh, so much a triptan. You don't want to give the triptans, right? And then prednisone, that's not the best answer for um, this scenario, okay? All right, so I just wanted to give you a few. This is how we'll do. Some days there'll be more than others. Some will be easier than others because, as I always tell y'all, you know, they're testing on assessment, diagnosis, evaluation, and planning. There's always a method to my madness. And um, when they're testing on this, these is knowledge-based in certain areas. So they want to make sure that you're able to uh, identify signs and symptoms of the patient in presentation. They want to be sure that you know those diagnostic exams and those, and you're coming up with the correct di differential diagnosis. They want to make sure you know the next steps to evaluate and plan if a scenario goes a different way or if they um, 
if they are allergic and need a, a different line of therapy and then uh, treatment, knowing that you are able to actually uh, treat and implement these things. So some of these may be simpler than others, but I'm trying to strengthen that, that muscle, um, that muscle memory in the, and give you a stronger foundation because if you're able to quickly get these, and you know, I was discussing this recently with one of my one-on-one -on -one pa patients, one of my one-on-one -on -one review students, because I'm all about getting that foundation strong. If we get that foundational muscle memory strong, then even when you are on questions that kind of trip you up, you're able to push through it or you're able to critically think and you're, you're in a better chance of getting that correct when you feel like you don't know it all just because we have that, that knowledge base uh, stronger. So if you see some of those don't roll your eyes. Don't think I'm crazy. I'm doing it for a reason. Trust me, trust me, trust me. All right. So those are the three for today. Make sure that you are following because we will be doing this all month long. And as I always tell y'all, thank y'all for watching, but be sure to make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure that you share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. Um, if you have, again, if you have any questions that you want me to cover this month, um, I'm really trying to hit this hard and help you guys. You know, we're already almost through quarter one and we're, we're working. We're trying to push and go through and reach the goals for this year. We're not putting these exams off. Um, I, I work a lot with reviewers who have been unsuccessful previously and, uh, you know, we're, we're gearing to get you to that passing score. Stop putting it off. You know, no more excuses. Let's get to it. We have goals to do and, uh, and, and we're going to accomplish these things, right? But let, uh, make sure that you meet me back here. If you need any of the resources, if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session, if you want to, um, utilize any of my review courses or any of my review resources, my books, or any of those things, be sure to reach out to the nursing studio. You can call us at 803-400-6864, or you can reach out to us via email at the nursing studio one, the number one at gmail.com. Okay. All right, you guys talk to y'all soon. Bye y'all.